Welcome to Will It Fill It, a series of SOLIDWORKS video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. In Will It Fill It, we take a look at using the fillet tool in SOLIDWORKS and ways we can add tricky and problematic fillets to our models. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm an industrial designer with the Demonic Group. In this installment, we'll take a look at creating Y-blends, some of the trickiest transitions where we have three shapes flowing together. So here we're going to continue with our chair base example from the previous installment where we'll be blending two legs of the chair into the central cylinder. With the correct approach, these tricky modeling situations can be conquered. So here I have a cylinder and the one chair leg. And what I'm going to do is cut back the cylinder and the leg so that way they blend, so the white blend has a region uh, that it can be created in. So we started here and we trimmed out area for the Y blend. I've now created uh, some reference surfaces and mirrored them. What these are, here we have some splines made curvature continuous to these uh, edges and I've created surface extrudes. These will be used to ensure that we have uh, tangency across the mirror plane. So I now need to start uh, modeling this Y blend and the first thing I can do is create what I know. So the bottom here is pretty simple. I know that the bottom uh, shapes here have to flow together in a filleted shape. So here I've just created a sketch between these two profiles. Ignore the sketch that's showing in the background. I'm not entirely certain why that's happening. Uh, just a bug in SOLIDWORKS. So here I can actually shape the, the almost the radius of the fillet using the tangent length command in the boundary surface. So if I set this to 1, note that the transition almost looks a little pinched here. We see that the curvature is changing and it's flattening out in the middle here. So I found a sweet spot is between 1.3 and 1.5 here. So here I've actually shaped this and made it a tighter boundary surface by just changing uh, the tangent length. I have the curvature to face option to have that uh, curvature continuous connection. So the next thing I need to know is that uh, the middle of these shapes are going to blend together. So this is also easily accomplished with a boundary surface. And I have a second sketch here. Let's just take a look at this sketch for a second. So here I've created two splines, a top spline and a bottom spline. I've made them coincident to this construction line, kind of continuing the flow of this edge. One little known relation in SOLIDWORKS I like to use in this situation, so let's just uh, create this again, is the tangent face relation, or equal curvature face relation. So here I'm going to pierce this spline to this geometry, and then I'll select the spline, the edge, and the surface, and I get uh, a couple different relations. I have tangency to face, or equal curvature. So here I can actually make this uh, spline equal curvature directly to, uh, to this geometry. So this sketch in the middle will be helping define this blend and finally the Y blend. We'll use this as a guide of what the middle of this blend should look like. So here I've created a surface that's passing from this edge through, through the middle of that spline and finally through this edge here. On the bottom edge, I've set uh, curvature to this bottom edge. If I had to increase the tangent influence in the bottom, you'll see that at zero, kind of tame those spikes a little bit more. So I know what this geometry has to look like, so that's um, why I've created it first. And I'll knit this into the model. So now I need to tackle this Y blend and blend these three shapes together. The first thing I'm going to do is create this large oversized boundary surface. This isn't what I want the final geometry to look like, but I'm only really interested in the very middle of this shape. So I am creating a boundary surface between this edge and this edge, and it's following uh, that other sketch we created here. So now that I've created this large boundary surface, it's not the final shape, but I'll use a trim to trim out only the very middle and leave the, this middle piece. What this is going to do is help as a guide to surface fills which will complete these five-sided transitions. 
if I hide this now, I may be able to actually finish the transition here. So here I've created a boundary surface, or a surface fill, and I haven't used that, that guide. So I'm doing a lot more with the surface fill, and if I were to evaluate using the zebra stripes, which show the quality of our surface, it's pretty good. But there's a little bit of wavering in here. Perhaps the middle's not as, as clean as it could be. So 95% of the time, you're going to get good results with one surface fill. But I wanted to go that extra little step. So that's why I created that uh, boundary surface in the middle. And this will help guide two surface fills. Now, even though I, find I want uh, curvature continuity in these surface fills, I'm not going to start with uh, curvature on all edges. I'm going to start with tangent and I'm going to use the zebra stripes to evaluate the connection. A curvature continuous connection means that the stripes smoothly flow over. There's no uh, sharp jump. Whereas here we can see that there's actually a break in these lines. They're not smoothly flowing into each other. So I probably will need to add the curvature relation onto this edge. So I'll jump back into my surface fill, click through the edges to locate the one I want, So here I applied curvature to all edges and I'm actually getting a, a very bad result because I don't want curvature to this uh, reference helper surface. So you see that kicked in looking surface fill. So maybe if I was to just set tangency to the one edge. See, once again, I get that lumpy looking surface fill. So don't default to try and use curvature on all edges. Tangent is usually going to be um, good enough the large majority of the time. And we can use the zebra stripes tool to evaluate just how good our connections are. So we know that from before, I need to add curvature to this edge. I'll complete the surface fill and use the zebra stripes tool and see that where we had that hard uh, edge here, that angle our stripes are flowing a little more smoothly into each other, I do have that curvature continuous blend. So I'll create another surface fill on the other side. And finally, to complete the transition, I can use a final surface fill on this five-sided surface. I'll delete the reference geometry, knit everything into the model, and mirror the final shape. Let's turn off the edges and just take a look at the quality of our blend. So here we we able to create a really nice looking uh, blend between this geometry and something the normal fillet tool would not give us, where we create a Y blend of the fillets seamlessly fading out into other geometry between three different shapes. So start the Y blend by modeling surfaces you know. The bottom two surfaces are pretty simple and the boundary surface completes them. I'm framing the blend. I don't want to do too much with one surface fill. So I've created a large overside boundary surface and then I've trimmed it back to a smaller shape that will help guide the flow of the upcoming surface fills. I'm completing the blend with the surface fill and note that I'm only using curvature as required. If I don't need to have curvature, I'm only setting tangency. Use the zebra stripes to evaluate the quality of the surface. So here we can see the difference of two surface fills versus one. We're actually getting some undulations in the surface that uh, weren't present when I analyzed the zebra stripes with one surface fill. But here, two surface fills, a little cleaner geometry. We have that really smooth, flat middle, and we don't have uh, this distortion in the flow. We see that this shape is improved immensely over this shape. So I hope you enjoyed this installment of Will It Fill It? Please follow the Demonic Group on LinkedIn and YouTube where we'll be announcing new videos.